Welcome. In this video, we'll take a closer look at Kepler Rexo. Kepler Rexo re engineers the 80s, blending the iconic design of the Juno 6 and Jupiter 8 synthesizers with today's advanced digital audio tools. Every detail, from oscillators to filters and control interactions, has been meticulously analyzed to create a sound that faithfully honors these analog predecessors. Let's start with the global controls along the top. Hold is able to hold the notes as if you didn't release the keys on the keyboard. This applies to piano roll notes too. Transpose the sound down or up an octave here. The menu on the top right has more global options. Up first step quantize. The arpeggiator, which we'll fully explore later, will always start its pattern quantize to steps or 16th notes. And you can choose from one of the available themes here. You can use the X and Y macro knobs here to map multiple parameters that you can control from the piano roll. Finally, there are knobs for master volume and panning here. Now let's get into the specific controls. We will start with where you will be spending most of your time. The DCOs, or Digitally Controlled Oscillators. Both oscillators can create three different waveforms, including a pulse, saw, and square wave. The pulse waveform deserves some extra attention. It's like a square wave. However, the relationship between negative and positive polarity, also known as the pulse width, can be adjusted continuously. We will talk about modulation as a whole later, but some modulation in Kepler Exo is permanently assigned. For example, LFO1 and LFO2 are always routed to the DCO pitch. You can even flick the switch above the slider and combine the LFOs to create less regular movements. The envelope amount slider is always linked to envelope 2 and also modulates the pitch. PWM slider lets you choose a modulation source for the square wave's pulse width. There are three options. You can choose LFO or envelope, and in turn, LFO1 or envelope 1 will modulate the pulse width of the oscillator by the amount set by the PWM slider. The manual option lets you directly control the pulse width. Both DCOs include a sub-oscillator, tuned to one octave below the oscillator pitch. It can thicken up a sound when subtly mixed in. And has controls for its volume and phase here. Additionally, DCO2 adds the following controls. A semitone offset relative to DCO1. Tune offset, which is a fine pitch offset relative to DCO1. And hard sync, which will force DCO2 to restart its waveform cycle whenever DCO1 completes a cycle. This will cause DCO2 to produce a distorted waveform that is rich in harmonics, but locked to the pitch of DCO1. The cross mod section allows true FM between DCO1 and DCO2. Most FM synths use phase modulation, in which the pitch of the result stays consistent. With the direct frequency modulation method used in Kepler Exo, that is rarely the case. You can set how much DCO1 modulates DCO2 and vice versa. and also set various FM-specific waveforms instead of the direct oscillator output. The less complex the modulator waveform is, the greater control you'll have over the result, so it's good to see triangle and sine waves represented here.
Now let's talk about the main course, the filters. The main VCF, or voltage controlled filter, is a special low pass design. It can do a 6 decibel an octave slope that still allows a resonance bump, like in several highly coveted analog synth designs. And no less special, for the first time in FL Studio history, its frequency can directly be modulated at audio rate via DCO1's audio output or several modulator waveforms at DCO1's pitch, selectable on the right hand side here. Turn up the amount to hear what that does. Frequency and resonance parameters are self-explanatory. They set where the filter sits in the spectrum and how much the cutoff frequency is emphasized. Like the oscillator pitches, the main filter also has some modulation sources directly available in the panel. Envelope 1, LFO 1 and 2, and keyboard tracking. You can flip the polarity of the combined modulation with this switch. Now up is down, and down is up. There's also a second filter, a very gentle high pass with variable frequency. And while we're here, let's also quickly talk about the VCA or voltage controlled amplifier. It is in charge of level changes in Kepler Exo. You can modulate the volume with envelope 1 or 2, or choose to have a static volume level with the gate setting. Additionally, this knob is where you set how much note velocity impacts the volume. Now that we've covered the basic signal flow, let's talk about modulation and effects. The LFOs mostly work the same way, but there is one key difference. Both have a rate slider that can be time synchronized with a button. Both can also be faded in using the delay slider, triggered as notes come in, or manually using the LFO trigger control here, and when its button is turned on, shifted in phase with the slider on the right. LFO2 adds a waveform selector for the modulation. Noteworthy is that the random and glide waveform slowly glides from one random value to the next. Instead of immediately jumping from one value to the next, as in the standard random mode. Moving on to envelopes now. Envelope 1 and 2 are functionally the same. Attack is the time the modulation needs to reach the full output level from zero. Decay sets how long it takes the envelope to fall down to the sustain level. Sustain is the level the envelope rests at when a note is held. And release defines how quickly the envelope falls to zero after a note is released. As we noted earlier, a lot of the modulators are pre-assigned in Kepler XO. For when you need a modulator to go to a specific control, you can use the mod matrix down here. You can assign 8 extra internal modulations. Pick a source modulator on the left and the destination parameter on the right. The knob next to each destination is used to scale the modulation from minus 1 to 0 to plus 1. Kepler Exo, like its little brother Kepler, also has a built-in arpeggiator. You can turn it on here. The mode switch changes cycle direction. Up, up and down, down, and some more complex modes. Range spreads the arpeggio over octaves, up to three of them. Rate sets the playback 
playback speed of the arpeggiator. Sync it to the song tempo with the switch above the slider. And finally, gate controls note length in the sequence. That is the entire synthesis engine covered. Now we'll explore the built-in effects. First up, the chorus. Also found on Kepler, this is our Juno 6 chorus emulation. Since it is a scaled-down version of the Vintage Chorus plugin, we will just let you hear what it sounds like and link you to our Vintage Chorus tutorial that shows in detail how this chorus works. To the right, you'll find five more effects. A saturator, hyper chorus, a three-band EQ, and delay and reverb. The saturator, as you can see here in the graph, is basically a soft clipper, adding subtle to screaming distortion. You can choose to have it pre or post the other effects. Hyper Chorus is another fully fledged chorus plugin built into Kepler Exo. Check out our Hyper Chorus tutorial to see how it works. The three band EQ is semi parametric with high and low shelves and a peaking filter in the middle. Click and drag the display to change the settings or use the controls on the left. The delay is an implementation of Fruity Delay 3. Some parameters like feedback distortion are omitted for space reasons, but it can do most of what Fruity Delay 3 can do. For a deeper look, check out the Mixing Basics video on delays. And the reverb duplicates Fruity Reverb 2 minus the modulation controls, so you'll be familiar with those parameters if you've checked the Mixing Basics on reverbs as well. That leaves only one section on the UI to explain, the polyphony playing mode or portamento controls. We've already talked about the LFO trigger button, so you know what that does. The switch labeled porter mode can choose between exponential, which will glide more quickly the further incoming notes are apart, to be closer to the destination pitch earlier, and linear, which uses a constant rate for pitch falls and rises. Set the overall pitch glide time here. This section is all about play mode, how notes will change from one to the next based on playing style. Mono turns on monophonic mode, only one voice at a time will be played. Legato will glide on note transitions. The re-trigger option can tell Kepler Exo to re-trigger all modulators despite legato pitch glides when a new note is played. And release will only re-trigger all envelopes on note off. Useful for trills. And with that, we've showed you all the controls on Kepler Exo. What does it sound like in practice though? With the hard sync option on and automating the pitch of DCO2, we can get a Daft Punk-esque lead sound. If you're into drum and bass, you may also have heard this sound before. The filter moving in a plucky motion immediately excites retro wave feeling without too much effort. Adding continuous pulse width modulation to a stack of square waves like this is a quick way to get a great sound for chords and pads that works in a huge variety of settings.
And that's really all we can say about Kepler Exo. Now it's time for you to get stuck into the synth yourself and try it at home. We hope this video gives you the resources to incorporate Kepler Exo in your workflow. Don't forget to check out the video description for a link to the manual page for Kepler Exo and the demo projects we made for this video. Happy music making!